Well, come on, guys. Well, I'm in cyclist hell at the moment. <laughs> Cyclists everywhere. And I'm also on the electric FXS, the Zero FXS electric supermoto. And these, uh, these cyclists really can't hear me. You have to watch out for them pulling out and overtaking each other. But anyway, enough of that. This is the second part of my FXS review. I've had this bike for a week now. I've rode it economically, I've rode it flat out, I've tested out all of the custom map settings that you can do with it. I'm ready to give my verdict on the Zero FXS. So first of all, massive thank you to the English Electric Company who lent me this for a week. They're based in Norfolk, they dropped this off to me, a fair old trip for those guys. So uh, if you're thinking of buying an electric bike, first of all, I recommend you check those guys out. They will even deliver bikes to you to test ride if you're really serious about buying one. So this bike, what do I think to it? It's, it's a very, very difficult one to to review because I've not tried any other electric bikes so I can't do a comparison between this electric bike and another electric bike so I can only do a comparison between an electric supermoto <laughs> and a petrol supermoto or, or motorcycle lightweight motorcycle first of all some of the stuff I covered before I mean as a bike the main things brakes handling all of that stuff is very good the suspension is a little bit budget I think there's been some cost saving with the suspension. It's a little bit crashy over sort of bumpy surfaces. And what is going on here? I think I'm in the middle of a, of a bike race. It has an eco and a sport mode. The eco mode limits your torque. It limits your, limits your top speed. It also turns on maximum regeneration when you're coming off the throttle. Because this will actually charge itself. When you come off the throttle, it will re regenerate the electricity. So it turns the, the motor into an alternator and it charges the battery. Also, when you go on the brakes, it charges the battery as well. Now, I don't know how that works. I don't know how that braking energy is turned into electrical current to charge the battery. I don't, I don't understand that, but apparently it does. And there's a little gauges on the dash which show you regen and output so you can see how much throttle you're giving it how much torque you're giving it and the same when you come off the gas it swaps down and shows how much regen you're doing on the battery big girls you are beautiful <laughs> if ridden hard I've been, I've been able to get about 50 miles out of it so that's if you're going out for pleasure if you're giving it a lot of right wrist you're riding without any consideration for economy you get about 50 miles so you know that that's that's a couple of hours riding really an hour and a half riding when you're when you're opening it up so it's not even really an evening's worth of going out and having fun so it's not a lot if ridden sensibly i'm actually in eco mode now and as part of this review we're going to see what range i can get when ridden in eco and ridden as, as sensibly as you practically can on the road. I mean, a lot of people said, you know, how does it compare to riding a petrol motorcycle? It isn't as engaging. It isn't as engaging because you've got no gears, you've got no noise. That does take away some of the engagement, some of the fun with riding it. It, it can't be denied. It, this would make a fantastic camera bike because you can really hear, I mean, listen to this, you can really hear the other. You can really hear the other vehicles on the road. It would make a great camera bike for following the petrol powered brethren. I can go to Lumi's and I can be pretty much guaranteed <laughs> this is going to be the only electric bike at Lumi's, not alone an FXS. If I pull up and there's another FXX at Lumi's, I'll donate £100 to charity. <laughs> That's how confident I am that it's going to be the only one there. Oh, that sounds nice. 
Let's go into Lumi's. Look at all these bikers. I better hope there's no other FXSs here. Well, it's going to cost me 100 quid. He comes in. No one even notices he's arrived on this silent motorcycle. Yeah, it's 105 new metres of torque from nothing. And then as the revs go up, the torque goes down. It's like opposite to a... a no means left or right hand rule. One or two. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Five year. Five year guarantee on the battery. And 250,000 miles, they reckon, wow. on the battery. Yeah. So... Oh, that's good. Yeah. It's more better than they used to be, then. Yeah? It is. And it only weighs 135 kilos. It's not even heavy. But yeah, some interesting comments from people about the bike. I think people are surprised how far along the battery technology has come already. I think when people talk to them about the weight of the bike, the power it makes, the torque it makes, you know, the miles that they're claiming that the battery can do, 250,000 miles, the five-year warranty, I think people overall are actually quite surprised that the technology has reached this level already. What is nice on this is just coming out and cruising. Just coming out and not looking to go fast, not looking for excitement, but just a day like today, the sun is out, it's a beautiful day, just to come out and admire the, the countryside. You know, you don't, you've got no noise. You do feel a lot more engaged with your surroundings because you don't have any noise. So it is absolutely gorgeous just to come out. It's almost like going out on a push bike. You've almost got that same sort of at oneness with the <laughs> with your surroundings, with the countryside. It is quite therapeutic, let's call it. <laughs> All very civilised. Out of the road. They cannot hear me. They don't know I'm here. They're a bloody menace. Another horse. Horse loves it. There's something very English about this. <laughs> 79 percent left, 17 miles done. An estimated range of 45 miles still. I think we're going to get about 80 miles, I'm guessing. 80 miles on eco mode. People say, can you wheelie it? Can you wheelie it? I think you could wheelie it with some practice. I'm not going to try now because I want to, that's going to burn additional electric. But the problem why you can't wheelie it is they've made the throttle response very subdued. So it, it's very, very gradual. So you open it up and it's, you know, it needs to be sharper. It's a bit flat, the throttle. And that makes it really hard to wheelie because you can't snap it to get the front up. I've been through the app, you can't adjust the throttle map. You know, you can't choose a different aggressiveness of your throttle map. If you could, and you could sharpen that up, I think it would be a bit of a wheelie monster. <laughs> I think you could snap it, it would come up and just hold it <laughs> as it accelerates, because you've got no gear changes and you've got loads of torque. But as it is, with, it, with the soft map on the throttle, it is possible with some bouncing and getting the timing right, but it's not, it's not easy. Get some tuning done on it. Get it tuned. I'm going to turn around. Steering lock. It's really good. It still takes some getting used to when you stop just having nothing. 69% battery, 22 miles covered. There's a bike. There's another one. Common as muck. So I'm stuck behind a caravan, but... I don't care. I'm just enjoying cruising along. Yeah, you can go cruising on a on a Super Duke on a naked, but you're not quite as that one with your surroundings. Oh. She's charging down the hill. She's massively charging when I pull the brakes. I don't know how that works. But that, the, the engine braking you get when in eco mode is, is similar to the Super Duke. It's a lot of engine braking when it's charging. It's sort of 
almost like you've got the back brake on a little bit. You can that limit, you know, you can turn that down, you have as much as you want, change it through the app how much regen stroke engine braking you want. Oh, we gave it, a, gave it a bit of overtaking there. So I hinted at it in the last video, we did some performance comparisons with this and the 701. The 701 being a similar sort of bike, it's a similar price to this, it's a supermoto bike. So how did the FXS compare in a, a launch against a tuned 701? The, the 701's got an exhaust, it's got a power commander, it's got a filter, so it's slightly tuned. How did the FXS compare? Let's take a look. This is it, which is quicker? 701 or the FXS. Electric versus petrol. There's a lot of stake here, electric versus petrol. Ready? to 70 I thought that might happen do one more back that way three two one go come on baby <laughs> that's quite amusing so it's it's quick you can beat a tuned 701 to around 70, but then it runs out of legs a little bit. The government have said, you know, by 2040, all vehicles must be, all vehicles being sold must be electric. So, you know, 20 years time, you're not going to be able to buy a fossil fueled vehicle anymore. So we need companies like Zero designing these bikes, maturing this technology. Yes, this is fantastic. It really is whether it's got enough miles to be you know it's, it's, it's great for a certain group of people if you need to commute and your office is within 30 miles of your house then this is a very very good viable cheap solution to get you to work i mean people will say yeah okay you're charging it at home but you're still burning fossil fuels when you're plugging it in at home you know you, you can't preach about being fully safe to the environment and everything because you know fossil fuels are still burnt nuclear power stations are still producing toxic waste to charge these things and at the moment if everyone were to switch tomorrow to electric vehicles the national grid would absolutely collapse it's already at capacity so you know the government knows that they're, they're probably not going to be ready in 20 years time there's so much investment needed in renewable energies there's so much investment needed on the national grid to be able to support everyone charging their vehicles at home you know at the moment there is a long way to go until all of that infrastructure is ready and and you know every year these batteries get slightly better slightly better slightly better now they're at a point with the supercharger where it is a viable option what are they going to be like in another 10 years? What are they going to be like in 20 years? Hydrogen cells, perhaps. Solid state batteries, perhaps. You know, we're, we're, th th this is a maturing technology still, and this isn't the final product yet, if you like. But the way things are going, it really is quite exciting. And I think motorcycling is very much going to be alive in the electric era. Gorgeous. So there we go, heading home now. I've got 12% battery remaining. I've covered 61 miles and it's estimating another 10.4 miles until I run out. So 70 miles range on Eco, driven real world 
environment, you know, so a little bit of overtaking. It's quite hilly around here, so I've been up lots of hills. About 70 miles, which is what they're claiming, so pretty happy with that.